Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm one of the CVTs here at Dove Lewis. I'm going to talk to you today about proper hand placement for giving compressions. There are two types of different compressions that we can give our patients. Um, one is the thoracic pump technique, and one is the cardiac pump technique. The thoracic pump technique is going over um, their thorax and using their thoracic pressure to push blood out to the body. Um, thoracic pump technique is used in patients where they're um, barrel chested or they are as deep as they are wide. Um, I, sometimes they refer to different breeds, but that can be a little difficult with the different variations in breeds that we see. In, in, in breeds, I mean. Um, so the thoracic pump technique, you can kind of gauge where your hands should go by using the patient's elbow. And so that is where I will place my hands on this Jerry dog when I give compressions. For our cardiac pump technique, we are going over where their heart is in their chest. So this is for patients that have a deep chest or have a really pronounced um, sternum. I almost said keel. <laughs> um, the... As, such as um, for Great Danes or Greyhounds, you're going to be able to better place your hands over where their heart is, so the cardiac pump technique, and really kind of um, use the ventricles um, to push blood out to their body. So um, I will get on the table and talk to you about compressions. First, you wanna make sure that you're up and over your patient. So I'm on a step stool, and I'm still not able to really get my body over this patient, so I am going to very carefully get onto the table which is not recommended, but I've made sure the light's out of the way and I'm fully planted. So just be really careful not to fall off the table when you're doing this. The reason I wanna get up and above the patient um, for a patient of this size is because I need to use my body weight to help with compressions. So I am going to place my um, palms over each other and I'm going to lock my elbows and my shoulders will be over my elbows, which are over my wrists. We want to compress one third to one half the width of the chest. So I'm going to attempt to do that. And you can always use a partner or your coworker to tell you that your compressions are deep enough or not, or we can always suggest to try and compress a little bit deeper. A few really big tips are to make sure that you're using your body weight and your um, core and not your back, but you also wanna make sure that your wrists are over each other and your elbows are locked. If your elbows are not locked, you will be pushing force down and outward instead of down towards the patient where you're trying to give compressions. And that's just going to be lost uh, energy, basically. So I'm going to very carefully get back down. Some people are tall enough with a stool that they can get up over their patient, but you can see here that I'm not really able to. I'm on my tippy toes. It's great. You're, you have the dog's back right to your legs, which means that it can't roll away from you. Your elbows are locked and everything is really well aligned. I can see that you're using your core. Nice job, Carter. Cool, cool. Do I have to get up on the table? No, you don't. If you're tall enough to get over, hey, look at that. See, David has his feet planted well on the step stool. I'm glad you're tall enough to do that. Okay. Nicely done. Good compressions. Your elbows are locked. Everything looks great. Taller than me? We about the same height? I have to get on the table. Be very careful, obviously, and make sure you don't hit your head. But I am not able to get up and over unless I'm standing on my tippy toes for this patient, and that's not going to be ergonomically helpful for me. So I have to get on the table. And this kid has a pretty, like, wide as deep chest. Like, he's as wide as he is deep. There we go. Okay. Round. So I use his elbow as an idea of where I should place my hands. If he was a greyhound or something like that, then he, we would be able to put our hands kind of over where his heart is in his chest. But his is more like up here. So we're going to use the pressure from his thorax to help move the blood. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to place my hands over each other. David likes to interlock his fingers and a couple other people, but I tend to lose circulation. So I just kind of place them on top of each other. And make sure your elbows are locked. And then your shoulders are over your elbows, which are over your wrists. Because if your elbows aren't locked, then you're just like pushing energy out. Yeah, pushing energy out that's not going towards the chest. And then use your body weight and your core, not your back, because you know we have um, delicate backs in this in this job. Yeah. Um, and I like to have the patients like back towards me because then it can't scoot away. Yeah. Want to okay. give it a shot? Cool. Thanks for being. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Again, don't hit your head. Okay. So you said like this. Mhm. Mm Make sure your elbows are locked. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah, and if this was a real patient, I'd be like, you should probably give a you know, little bit harder compressions, but he's got a barrel chest. Like, very good job. Everything's really nicely aligned with your elbows and your wrists and your shoulders. Great compressions, good um, rhythm too. So if you push the patient towards you or somehow so that you're not, there we go, that way it won't move away from you. Nice job, your elbows are really locked and you're giving really great compressions. Great job, Sam. This stool height would work fine for any of these guys. So our next size down, a schmedium. 
um, this is fine. I can get over this patient well. Um, if it's small enough and you have really big hands, you could do something like this, but I would probably do the two-handed technique here. Um, and then this kid would probably be one where I can do use both of my hands and my fingers to compress over the heart. And the nice thing about smaller patients is that we could put them sternal for intubation or put them laterally to continue compressions. So for our little patients like cats or small dogs, you could do one-handed compressions. You can hit the, sit them up sternal so that they can intubate maybe and do compressions at the same time. Sometimes it's a big cat or something and you might have to do two-handed, but either side is fine. Okay. Go ahead and so give it a shot. Not like the big one, but just like. Mm -hmm. Is this yep. Perfect. Cool. Great job. And then our mediums, you can do a similar thing. Sometimes they get to the point where you can't really compress with your thumbs or they get tired. So you can do something like this or um, get up and over them like in normal compressions. If it's something that's uh, got a bigger chest, maybe like a Frenchie or something like that. Okay. So it's like the same thing. Like mm -hmm. Perfect. Great job. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't matter which side. You can set them up sternal. It's great. It's like you've done this before. Once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> One, you have the ability to do it one-handed. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay for smaller patients, um, if you're able to fit your hand around their chest, you can go right over their heart and do compressions like that. One-handed, maybe two-handed. They could be turned over to the other side. It doesn't matter which side you compress them on. You can sit them up sternal um, if needed for helping with intubation. Um, and then we have, yeah, you're doing a great job. And then we have kind of a schmedium dog here. Um, and depending on if they are, you know, something smaller where it's a little bit more compressible, easily compressible versus like a Frenchie, I might get up on a step stool and over them if it is a Frenchie because they have a little bit, you know, more of a barrel chest and harder, harder to compress, but you're doing a great job. Kind of depending on their size, you'll gauge whether you can use one or two hands or do the um, interlocked uh, palms under your elbows and under your shoulders. The normal CPR compressions, I guess.